Hey guys, welcome to Actual Ol. Today I'm starting a new vlog series called Now Playing, where I talk about the games I've been playing lately and give you my thoughts on them. Uh, before I start, I want to talk about my Patreon campaign, which I'm going to be launching next week. This is a way that you guys can help support me run the channel, basically keep it going. So please look out for that next week. Uh, but let's get on with the game. So first up is Seventh Continent. This is a beast of a game that was kickstarted a couple of years ago. Huge Kickstarter. And this is a huge game. It's a really, really heavy box when it has these trays of cards in. Everything in the game is done with these square cards. They represent the map of the islands that you are traveling around. And they also represent your skills and items and all sorts. And I haven't seen half of these cards. This is a rich exploration game where you start off on a map tile and then you will move around revealing more and more of the seventh continent. And you're gonna be encountering all sorts of beasts, unraveling story. It's very immersive storytelling game. Everything's got a bit of text on and you're learning more about this continent. And you're, you don't really know anything about anything when you start and you're exploring it and learning as you go. There are loads of different types of actions that you can do, such as attacking and exploring and seeing and praying and climbing and fishing, and there's so many actions, and they're all done with this action deck. And it's a really clever, simple system where every action that you do, it requires a certain number of cards to be drawn from this, and this is effectively your life supply, and then a certain number of successes that you need to get when you reveal these cards. So if I'm gonna complete an action, I might need one success. Let's say I draw three cards to be safe, and then I reveal them to see if they have any success symbols on them. And it's great because this is quite a deep, rich game, and yet that system applies across the board. And once you've got to grips with that, you've got to grips with the whole game, basically. And yet the decisions are always interesting because how much energy do you want to spend? Is it worth even doing that action? You come across some graves. Do you pray at the graves and something might happen? Or do you just walk past it and move on because you need to spend your time and energy doing something better? You can get energy back into the deck by maybe hunting some animals and eating them, and that's gonna give you more energy. You don't even know exactly what you're looking for, and this scenario that we've been playing apparently can last 20 hours. We've played it for about seven hours. And really, this is a game, I've never played a game like it. The exploration, you always want to see what's next around the corner, and the islands go on and on, and you create these big maps as you reveal more and more cards, but you could be wasting time going in the wrong direction. There's these clouds that cover the hidden parts and you always wanna look and find more things, but generally you're gonna encounter stuff that slows you down. There's lots and lots of obstacles in the game. It's a really impressive game from what seems to be a first time publisher and design duo, and it's massive. They've put so much effort and love into it. There's so much artwork and the artwork is really nice. And so far we've loved it. The storytelling is amazing. But at the same time, it's gone on, the first scenario has gone on for a long time and we're not sure where the end point is. It doesn't have much of a structure in the way that something like Time Stories does. And so you wonder, is it gonna keep it up? Will we get to those 20 hours and feel like it was worth it? When you're living in the moment of this game, you're having fun because there's always stuff to explore and there's always new things. You always turn to a new number with a new card in this deck and there's something that you've not read or seen before. So that in itself is interesting. But will it keep being interesting 18 hours in? I'm not too sure. So for now, I would say I would recommend trying this game because it's completely new. It's completely unlike anything I've ever played and I'm having a blast with it. And so if the journey is good, does it matter whether the endpoint has a satisfying resolution? Uh, I can't say right now, but I feel like it's worth the journey because even if the endpoint isn't that satisfying, I've still had a great time playing it so far. So I'm looking forward to keep playing Seventh Continent. And if it's worth talking about, I guess I'll come back and talk about it in a future one of these vlogs. So that is Seventh Continent. Right, up next is another beast of a game. This is Wasteland Express Delivery Service. This is designed by John Gilmore, 
Ben Pinchback and Matt Riddle. And John Gilmore is the name here that I'm most excited about because he's one of the co-designers of Dead of Winter, one of my favorite games, which I've reviewed in my zombie uh, mega review. This is a pick up and deliver game set in a post-apocalyptic world. Imagine Mad Max and you are playing a lorry driver, effectively. You're delivering goods across this apocalyptic wasteland. So you've got lots of map tiles and lots of locations that you can go and visit. You've got a really cool truck meeple that you're delivering goods to and from different locations in this world. And this represents your truck. These, this helps you decide your action and this is where you store things. Before we talk about the gameplay, let's talk about how nicely this game has been made. This game comes with these inserts made by game trays that are wonderful plastic molded inserts that keep everything uh, in this game just well stored. And this game has a lot of bits. So they've really put the thought in. They've realized that this is a beastly game. One, one of those games just with lots going on and for those games, you generally need a good way to store it. If you don't, it's gonna take you an hour to set it up, an hour to pack it away, and just a lot longer to understand it and, and deal with it. And you don't wanna to have to be dealing with admin. You want to just enjoy the fun of the game. And so I really, really appreciate that they've realized that and they've put the effort in. They've spent the extra money effectively and made inserts that this is the mod shop where these are all things that you can modify your truck, make it better at fighting, better at storing stuff. Um, and so that's where you get all those tiles. This is just storing the various stuff in the game. So this is cash and this is the different cargo that you can take. And this is uh, the stuff for setting up the game. These are all the different trucks and all the things you need. Even the cards have their own little trays that you can keep out on the tr table and they stack up in the box. It's by far the best ball game insert I've ever seen. And I mean, it even shoots out of the water the ones that you can buy yourself, like the wooden ones, because this has been perfectly uh, designed exactly for this game with, with tons of thought put into it. So then we get onto the game. As I said before, this is a pick up and deliver game. So if you've ever played Merchants and Marauders, Firefly, Merchant of Venus, games where you are controlling a vehicle of some kind, you're moving around a map, you're basically picking up stuff and then selling it somewhere else. You've got jobs that you have to complete and you're getting either points or cash for it. In Wasteland Express Delivery Service, the way you win the game is by completing three jobs or three of a certain type of job. Some jobs are quite small and they give you a bit of cash so you can spend that cash on other stuff. Whereas there's some big jobs. As soon as you've completed three big jobs, you win the game. So there's a race there. And I like that because it keeps a pace to the game. The other game that I would compare this to is Merchants and Marauders. And that's a game where you have to get to 10 points and there's loads of different ways to get to 10 points. This is a bit simpler in that respect but there's still loads and loads going on. And so you have your jobs, some are public that you're sharing, some are private, and you have to decide how you're gonna kit out your truck and the decisions you're gonna make to do things most efficiently. And that's what these types of games are, they're all about efficiency. And so I don't find that I'm especially good at them because there's a lot to keep in your head. You're like, oh, I need to go over there. But actually, if I went over there first and improved that part of my truck, and then I went over there, and you get caught up trying to improve everything, but then you could waste, up, waste time trying to improve your truck so much that you never actually get the jobs done and somebody who was a bit more efficient gets things done quicker than you and they win the game. Every game is gonna be different because the map is gonna be laid out completely differently. So one game, a job that requires you to get to this location and then this location is much easier in that game than in another game. There's not a whole lot of interaction in this game. Um, you can fight with raiders, which are like NPC uh, vehicles that will get you cargo or they will attack you. And you can force raiders to attack other players, but you can never fight between players. There might be a variant for that, but generally the base game isn't. And so it does feel more like a Euro strategy game. The person who's got their brain switched on the most and, and knows how to be efficient and do things right, they're gonna win the game, it feels like. They have tried to put a real story theme aspect to this game, and I think they've done a decent job. The blurb at the start of the book, it really sets you in for this world, and 
they explain it nicely in the way that a lot of games don't. There's flavor text on all the cards, but it's one of those games where you really have to be on it to, st I, I feel like it's, we, especially with the first game, we were trying to learn the rules and I didn't want to, there to be too much downtime. I didn't feel like I had the time to read the flavor text on these cards, which is a shame, but I guess that's just the nature of it. And in terms of downtime, it's not too bad because you take it in terms with action. So I do an action and then you will eventually do five actions. And this board that uh, I had, the player board, it really helps you understand how the actions work because it's fairly complicated um, when you first learn the rules, but actually, once you've got them down, there isn't too many edge cases, you aren't gonna keep going back to the rules. And so that's quite nice. This really helps you understand, oh, okay, so if I do a movement for my first action and then I do something else, I'm not gonna build up this momentum. There's, there's cool little, uh, there's lots of cool little thematic features such as if you move in two consecutive turns, you're going faster because you're, you're gathering momentum as you travel through the wasteland. Whereas if you stop at an outpost, that's gonna lose that momentum. I enjoyed it. I'm not sure it's the kind of game for me. And then at the same time, I already really enjoy Merchants and Marauders, which is a pirate game with a similar feel, but that game I just prefer the theme of. It's a slightly more sandbox element in that game where you can choose to take different paths and do different things. You can be a merchant or you can be a pirate. So uh, I'm gonna try this one again. It's definitely a great game. If you love post-apocalyptic wasteland type themes and you like pick up deliver games, then I can highly recommend it. Um, I'm just not sure it's for me. Finally, I wanna talk about Word Slam. This is a party game that I picked up at the UK Games Expo. It's designed by board game design couple Inca and Marcus Brand who's made Village and the Exit the Game escape room games, which are amazing by the way. And in this game, you're trying to get your team to guess a word. There's two teams playing against each other at the same time and you're trying to guess one word. So for example, you might be guessing actor. These are some of the easy words. And they're racing to do that. One person on their team is giving clues by using words from this deck of words. And they're sort of obtuse words. You've got opposite, animal, metal, small, old, things like that. You've got verbs, nouns, adjectives, and prepositions. So I might go man, play, fictitious job, something like that, and hope that they get it. I'm playing the cards for my team so that they can see them on these card uh, shields. And the other team are, are doing exactly the same thing, but because the deck is so big and there's so many options, they're gonna probably use different words to me and they might get there faster or maybe their team's just better at guessing. And so what I really love about it is that it's so pacey. Everyone's playing at the same time and there's this competitive element where you're racing against the other team. And you don't have that in, in a game like Concept or certainly there's a feel a bit of code names here, but code names, some people hate it because it's so quiet. There's a lot of thinking and there's, you just have to wait for somebody to come up with a clue. Word slam, it's fast. As soon as you have your word, you're, you're going through that deck. There's almost a dexterity element where you're trying to get the cards out quick enough. But then there is still a challenge to the game. As you start to progress, there's four different difficulties. You start to play these cards where you're trying to get across lactose intolerance and then you really struggle and it's all about the creativity of how you use that deck of cards and one team's gonna do it completely differently to the other team. The other aspect is that both teams are guessing at the same time. So if you guess and you don't get it right, you're giving away what you know a little bit. You're giving away some information. The other team might not even be close. And by saying maybe you're guessing Johnny Depp for an answer, it's actually Brad Pitt, the other team have an idea at least that you're in the ballpark of actors. Um, so that just brings an extra element to it. It's, it's energetic, it's, it's vibrant, it's got people shouting constantly, it has the feel, that rabid feel of Time's Up, games that I really love. The only slight downside is that you're having to go through this deck of cards each time, and that can be a little fiddly, but I have seen people play it where they just lay out all the cards on the table, so there's less of a, a race to go through the decks. So I'm gonna try that next time. And it works really well with four players, just one person giving the clues on each term and one person guessing, but it's gonna work great up to 10 and above because it's really just how many people you have on your team. There's more people guessing 
maybe you'll get to the clues quicker, but then you'll just be playing for the next round. I absolutely love this game, and so for that reason, I'm gonna give Word Slam an actual love seal. And so this is uh, something I'm gonna start doing with the games that I really recommend. So the first one ever is Word Slam. I actually love Word Slam and would recommend it to anyone. I'm just gonna give you a quick sneak peek of the games that I'll be coming up, I'll be talking about soon because these are the ones that I've just got in and I'm gonna be playing. So there's That's a Question. This is a party game from Vlada Shavatil, the Codenames designer. So I'm interested to try this one out. This is about asking questions of your friends and trying to decide how they would answer. The Chameleon, which is a really good looking reprint of Gooseberry, which was a game that I loved at Essen last year. So I basically know I'm gonna like this, but I just wanna play it a bit more. And Rhino Hero Super Battle. Rhino Hero is a game that I reviewed in my Dexterity games, and that it's just a game where you build tower, card towers. Really cool game. And this one just takes it much, much further where you're building these huge structures and instead of just a rhino, there's other super animals as elephants and monkeys and stuff. So, uh, I, yeah, I can't wait to try that one out as well. So those are some of the games that I'm gonna be talking about soon as, as well as some others that I've been playing recently. Thank you for watching this first Now Playing vlog. I hope to see you at a future one. And if you have any constructive feedback, I'm still working this out, so let me know in the comments. And please check out my Patreon video that I'm going to be launching next week to see how you can help fund the future of Actual LOL. I'm John Perkis. Thanks for watching.